In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a deeper look into the glass material for Arnold 3ds Max. So here I have my active shade open. I have the Arnold renderer turned on, and I simply have a regular physical material applied to these glasses. So we're going to set up an Arnold material. To render an Arnold, you must go to your Arnold renderer. I have both active shade as well as my production renderer both set to Arnold. In both of these, I have to go into my system and turn on legacy maps for me to use any of the other than Arnold standard materials. So I have that, and now we're just going to go and take a look at how to set up the Arnold materials. So in my material editor, I'm in the current view of slate editor. I'm going to right click, go to materials, pick Arnold, and I'm going to go down to surfaces and just pick the standard surface. Now with the glasses selected, I have my Arnold material here. I'm going to apply it to the surface and make it visible in the viewport. These won't read properly in your viewport, so you do want to use your active shape to view this. So now we're going to go and make this a transparent material. So I'm not going to use the clear code. I'm just going to close this up. I did take a look at this material in the previous video. So I'm just going to go down to transmission and turn that to one. And now you'll see we get transparency. We also get some issues. We're going to take a look at these issues shortly. But I have four glasses. And when I modeled these glasses, I have them as two sided. I do have some detail in the glass. So we do have a little bit of specular roughness or specular set to one. Everything else is a default setting. So now that we have that applied, we're just going to take a look at how to make adjustments to our render of transparent materials. So I'm going to close up the material editor right now, and we're just going to stay in the active shade. So when you look at this, you'll see we have a, a few issues. Now in my scene, I put a psych and I also have an HDRI. To put an HDRI in, I just went up to Render, Environment, and here I put an HDRI map. And if we want to take a look at that map, I went to HDRI Haven and grabbed the map. So I'm just going to drag it in, make an instance, and take a look at this. It's a simple bitmap I applied. Um, of an HDRI. So we'll take a look at it in the file. And in my project folder, 3ds Max, I went ahead and placed some HDRIs in my images, and here they are. So the one I'm looking at right now is the studio one. So to put those in, and I'll just change the HDRI, we can go into our, there are different ways to do this and different types of maps we can put in. So I just put in a standard. I'm going to delete this, so I'm just going to clear it. And you'll see we get a different look in our scene now. I'm going to go to None, click on it, go to Bitmap, and then pick from my HDRIs. So this is the one I first put in, and I'm just going to put in a second one. So this is a different studio. Um, this one's a little bit warmer, and then I have more of an interior garage. So we'll use the interior garage. When you click, it's going to load the HDRI. It gives you choices. You can just leave the default for what we're doing. And this is the result I'm getting from this HDRI. It doesn't have as much light as the other, and I was using that solely for the light in the scene. So you'll see we really get very little light in this scene. So let's go back to the other HDRI. I'm gonna grab the small studio, load that. Let's see if we can get this to actually render. Sometimes you have issues, you have to force a render. Oh, 
Okay, so when we look at this, we have a few issues with the glass. So as I'm looking at it render, I can see it hasn't rendered transparency through all the levels. So we're going to look at how to make adjustments to this and how to fix this. So let's just come in, go into our render setup. In our render settings, I'm going to go and make sure I'm under the correct renderer. So right now I have my active shade open and I want to make the adjustments in my active shade. If I want to do a production render, then I make them here. So I can do our changes in the active shade, but then I have to make sure I go back to my production render. So just decide which workflow you prefer. I can just do everything in the production renderer, um, but if I am working in the active shade, I have to make updates to the production renderer, to whatever changes I'm making. So with your production renderer, if you want to save, you have to make sure you set it up to save your files in the common render output. But for us, we're not going to be saving this. We're just going to be making quick renders and then looking in. So we'll just stick with the production renderer right now. These are our default settings. And what we're looking at for transparency is our transmission. And right now for transmission, we have our samples and then we have our ray depth. So the simplest way to put this is our samples are um, from each pixel how many rays are being shot out so that it can draw the image. And then for our ray depth, it's how many bounces. So if you kind of hover over, you'll get a, a sort of hint for what these things do. So, when we are making adjustments to this, the one thing we have to keep in mind as well is that we have a limit of total rays. So if I make changes, right now there are 10, and it will not take account all the um, rays I'm generating unless I make changes down here. So when we're working, our transmission is going to be our transparency. And I'm going to go and take this down so we can take a look at what's happening. So I'm going to drop our ray depth down to one and make a render. And I don't need to finish this render. You can see from the start of the render that we're not getting any true transparency in the beginning glasses. Back here, I'm getting a little bit of transparency because we're not going through any layers. We just have this single object. So when it finishes, you would, you would get that same level up here. So this is how many bounces we're able to get inside of the object. So for each of these glasses, I have two sides. You see it's got a front and a back side. So we have to raise it up to two to get some penetration on the object. So here on the back side, we can see through the object on each of these glasses, the way that they're arranged, um, and the stems, because we're not getting that overlap. But down here in the base, we're not able to see through the whole object here, just because the angle we are. So let's raise this up. And we have four glasses. We have two sides each. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So I'm just going to bring it up to 8. We'll take a quick look. But we know we need 16 passes to get through this. And each time we generate with a higher amount, we have a longer process. So the more we're raising this, the higher the ray depth and samples, then the longer the render. Now right now I have eight. I went back up to eight. We have the same error we did in the beginning. But if I raise this any more, we're going to have an issue because we have our total rays set for 10. So I know I'm going to need to add at least 16, 17, 18 for what we have. So I'm going to raise this up to 25 just so we have enough. And then we're going to raise this up to 16. And now we're getting enough passes to get through all the glasses. So we still have a little bit of noise when we're looking at this. 
um, and that's going to be our samples need to go up. Our ray depth is enough to get through all of our glasses. So it took a lot longer to get through the glasses, and that's why you want to really pay attention to what you have in your scene, what needs to be rendered, to make sure you're not setting your numbers too high so you're not wasting time on renders. And right now, if I zoom in, you'll see we have a lot of noise in this scene. Now, I'm not worried about the background here. We're just looking at the transparency. So if I want to fix the background, I'm going to fix our diffuse. But what we want is our transmission, um, so where the transparency is. So if I raise this up in our samples, now we're going to be generating more rays out of each pixel. So we'll go up to four. I'm going to save this, and we're going to do one more render. And of course, these pixels are going to stay blurry, but the hope is we're going to get a little bit clearer render in our glass. All right, so you'll see that this is much smoother. I do have a bit of blur set for my glass, but beyond that, you'll see that the, the render itself is getting much smoother. So the time was more than tripled, um, but it definitely looks nicer 